Christ this morning become unworthy, but knowing that through the blood of Jesus, we were made worthy and righteous to stand in your presence. And that through the work of the cross and through what Jesus did, we are having this opportunity to come to you and lay our hearts to the feet of Jesus, unto the feet of Jesus and say that you are a good God. So we invite you in this service that your presence, your glory, will illuminate this place as your Holy Spirit will touch each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. my 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own thought, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left under for the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord. Forgive us all our distrust and grant that we may save you in your midst of life to the glory of your name. But 
the inheritance of this is land. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
the Lord be with you. And also Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to St. Luke, the seventh chapter, beginning from the 31st verse. Glory to Christ our Savior. Jesus went on to say, To what then can I compare the people of this generation? What are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling out to each other. We played the pipe for you and you did not dance. We sang the dirge and you did not cry. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine. And you say he's a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and you say he's a rotten and a drunkard a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by all our children. This is a gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Let us pray. We are blessed, O oh Lord, that we can come unto your presence. We are blessed, O oh Lord, that we can hear your word. We are blessed, O oh Lord, that we are able not to just hear your word, but put your word in action. So come, O Lord, and open the ears of our hearts. Come, O Lord, and silence the noises in our heads right now, so that you can make us to be collective and to be one, so that we can hear you even more and heed your call. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. In a, in a world full of noises, in a world full of chaos and confusion, in a world full of more of the material and less of God, in a world full of apathy and not apathy, the world full of hate and love, that we are still given the opportunity to bring ourselves unto the feet of Jesus and say, Yes, Lord, as your children, as believers, we are in this mist. That when we look in the mirror, it looks gloomy, but because we know of your presence, we know of your love. Know of what you are capable of. That's why we still come before you. It is not because of what we have, it is not because of our knowledge, it's not because of anything that we can do, but it is because of the blood that was poured out in Calvary that we can sit here and have an opportunity that nobody else has, and that is to praise the Lord even in the middle of the week, while other people are saying, well, we will park him in the middle of the week and see him on Sunday. So you're blessed that your commitment and your love for the Lord is a show of action. So good morning, everyone, once again. Um, this morning, I want us to talk about heeding God's call, you know, breaking the silence. Breaking the silence of indifference, breaking the silence of apathy, and breaking the silence of hate. So that we begin to move with love, move with empathy, move with knowing that as much as we come from different backgrounds, but there's something that binds us together, there's something that moves us together, there's something that makes us to be who we are, and that is uh, the living God. Not a dead God, but a living God who is a liar and reigns within us. So we're going to look at the scripture reading, uh, especially the Gospel of Luke. Um, I was tempted to focus more on uh, Corinthians because, you know, that's a favorite, favorite um, um, a passage in the Bible. We, when people are getting married, they like choosing that one. 
because he talks about love and what love is. But I want to believe that it was not long ago, it was uh, three weeks ago that my daddy uh, spoke about God's love when he challenged us to love one another. Um, and he shared a story of the women that were um, uh, killed, you know, they experienced the horror of death and um, they were fed to the pigs and um, his passion and love for justice at that time, you know, it came and uh, impenetrated through his message. So I want us to focus now on how do we hear God's call in the midst of that confusion, in the midst of you know, that chaos and that noise that we have in the world that we live in. Because Jesus in, in the gospel, he, he's asking a question that I think it resonates and it should resonate with all of us this morning. And he says, you know, I was laughing when uh, I was reading, especially this part of the gospel. I was like, Lord, you're asking me something deep now because it means that I need to go and introspect myself and look at my faith journey, look at myself as Ule and Lord is naked in front of God. Not Ule and that other people see and know, but Ule and that is seen and known by the living God. Because that Ule is different because God's eyes and our eyes are not the same. You may see a person in a different light, but God sees them as their true reflection to him. So when he, he's asking this question, he says, to what then can I compare uh, the people of this generation? What are they like? You know, as I said, in a world that is uh, full of noise, both external and internal. Remember the noise is not just outside. The noise is also inside, you know, constantly surrounding us. So how do we heed God's call? And how do we break that silence? So he says, um, when he's asking this question, what are they like? It's like he's asking us, what are we like? The people of this generation. Because those people were the generation of Jesus. And that is um, um, BC and A. I will say that before Christ. You know, we have BC and AD after you know, the death of Christ and before Christ. So this was, you know, AD, also between BC and AD when Jesus was alive. And he's asking them, the people of my generation, what are they like? He says, they are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling out to each other. You know, we play the part for you, you should dance, you know, um, and he says, for John the Baptist came neither eating, but the son of man came eating and drinking, and you say, he's a glutton, and you say, uh, John the Baptist is like a demon. These are the people of Jesus' day, you know. And I think it still speaks to us, because that's exactly how we, you know, see things sometimes. So, I'm going to have four, um, four things that I want to talk about, and then I'm going to sit down and allow you to simmer on that. Because I think these things are going to carry you throughout the week and you will be able to think about them. The first thing is, what are the distractions that are in the marketplace? And now, you have to imagine the marketplace being your life. Because the marketplace is busy, isn't it? People are selling, there's trade, there's all of those things. And that's our lives, isn't it? When you go to Shogun, Checkers, or Woolworths, there's a trade that's going on there. People are busy, they're killing, that's it. And in the marketplace, we have a tendency of ignoring God's call because um, the voices that are outside, they become more than the voice of God. Because remember, the voice of the Holy Spirit, what, what does it do? It whispers us in it. It's a whispering voice. It doesn't make any noises. So in, in the parable, because this was a parable, Jesus likens his generation you know, to children in the marketplace. And the marketplace was noisy, no business, as I said. And the children in the story are calling out to one another, but their voices are ignored. And uh, this is a metaphor, what Jesus is saying here, for people's response to God. He was teaching. You know, I love the Lord because he always had an opportunity to teach. And when he had the opportunity to teach, he didn't just shun away from it. He will literally take that opportunity. Something that we don't do. When we are given an opportunity to, to teach, we rather keep quiet and teaching. And so he's teaching. And um, this is a metaphor of 
how people respond to God, how they are distracted, and how they don't notice, and, and you know, some things. So, how much like that marketplace is our world today? How much? Because we live in a society where every moment is filled with noise, notifications, and all that we have, especially under the money. That kind of, you know, gives us a head and gives us a head. That is where every moment is filled with noise. Social media updates, endless entertainment. Our attention is constantly being pulled in different directions. So, the spiritual marketplace, we fail to hear. God's voice because we are too busy listening to everything else except the voice of God. So my question to you this morning is that in your life, if you imagine your life is a marketplace, in your life, what distractions are keeping you from hearing God's voice? Now I can't answer that for you, but you have to reflect on what is keeping me from hearing God's voice. If other people can hear God or believe in hear God speaking, what's keeping me from not hearing Him? Because in the text, Jesus shows us that God's voice can be missed. I want you to understand that. God's voice can be missed because of the business. Not because He isn't speaking, but because we aren't listening. We, our ears are clogged. Just like the children in the marketplace, we often find ourselves playing the flute but, you know, and singing the dirge, yet we are unmoved. Same with us, we can come to worship, we can come and worship God, but we are still unmoved by His presence. And we ask ourselves, why? Why is the presence of God not moving us? Why is it not moving us? Like it moved the people of old, like it moved the apostles. They did wonders and miracles, they did so much. But why is it that we're not doing that? So, so the call of God comes, but we remain indifferent. So, how do we remain indifferent to the call of God? You know, we need to turn down the noise in our lives. Meaning that we need to set aside intention in moments of silence where we can focus on God's voice and ask ourselves, are we really, you know, listening for God's call? I don't know if you do this, but I have times when I have a moment of silence. Now we're busy, I understand this thing, so busy, but we have to have that moment of silence in the world. That moment we can just say, you know what? Five minutes and take a breather and just talk to the Lord. Doesn't need to be an hour, but the discipline starts with you saying, I'm dedicating five minutes. I'm dedicating ten minutes. Oh, okay, I can go on for ten minutes. Give him thirty minutes. And then from then on, you know, the time increases. And then all of a sudden you're spending three hours, you know, and talking to the Lord. Not that you're not busy. But now your focus has changed, you know, from the busy things of life to focus on God and Jesus and Him being the center of your life. When He becomes the center of your life, then your life begins to function because now you'll be able to come up, you know, with the solutions that you need because you're spending time with the Lord. And the second thing is the inner noise. Because the inner noise, it, it has a tendency of dismissing God's message in our lives. I'm going to explain why. Jesus points out that the people dismissed both John the Baptist and himself. They dismissed him. They said John had a demon, isn't it? Because of his strict lifestyle. Remember John? He had a strict lifestyle. He did locust. He didn't live like a normal person. If you saw him, he lived exactly like the beggars on the streets. You know, you would run away from John. If John were to walk in this, you know, church hall, church house, ah -ha! you would run because he was not an ordinary prophet, he was not an ordinary messenger. He, has a, he had a kind of demeanor about him that would scare you off. And that was John, so they dismissed him because of that. And they called Jesus, dismissing him. They, they called Jesus a cousin and a drunkard. Can you imagine calling the Messiah a drunkard, highway, because he associated with sinners because of the people that he would be sitting with. 
So they called and named him names. So when you were named names, Jesus was named names as well. Okay? No matter how God uh, tried to reach them through the, the very repentance, because John was calling people into repentance, or the compassionate love of Jesus, because Jesus just killed them with kindness and love, isn't it? Their hearts remained closed. And sometimes we can preach the gospel, we can preach the love of God, but when a person's heart chooses to remain closed, there's nothing we can do about it. Until they choose to open their heart to the message of God, and that can change them. So this speaks to the inner noise within us, and that's the danger of the inner noise that's within us. The judgments you know, that we bring upon ourselves, the doubts and the fears that keep us from truly hearing God's call. Don't, don't hear me wrong, you know, don't get me wrong. You know, doubt is okay, but when doubt then becomes a hindrance for us to hear God's call, now that doubt is not good. So sometimes God sends his uh, message in a way we don't expect. Maybe it comes to a person we don't agree with or don't like, or in a situation we didn't anticipate, like the people in Jesus' time. We may dismiss God's messengers because they don't fit our preconceived ideas of what God should be like. So, so other voices, another question that I want you to think about, other voices in your life whether from scripture, reading scripture, or I have a mentor, you know. My, my mentor becomes another voice. I have a voice of God, and then I have a voice of His Word, and then I've got mentors, you know, voice of a mentor. Or even a circumstance where God is speaking, but you are too quick to dismiss it. And God always speaks to us. But sometimes we are too quick to dismiss it. I'll make you an example. You're walking into the office and God says, you know what? This and this is going to happen. And you shrug it off. You're like, ah, cannot be. And then you continue with your day. Exactly what God told you happens. But what did you do? You dismissed it. Sometimes he comes warning. Sometimes it comes encouraging, sometimes it comes motivating you. But you dismiss those moments because you think it's I'm probably crazy. Why would I think such a thing? It's the Holy Spirit in you speaking to you, but you dismiss it. So God's message is often accountable. John's message was one of repentance, and people said he's too harsh. Remember? Because his message was that you repent. There's nothing you can do. Just repent and be baptized. There's nothing else he preached. Repent and be baptized. So people said he was too harsh. Jesus' message was one of love and grace, and they said he's too soft. When we are not in tune with God, we miss the balance of both correction and love that God offers us. So as we examine our hearts, we also need to ask this question. Am I rejecting the ways God is trying to speak to me? Am I dismissing his message? Am I dismissing his messengers because they don't come in the way I expect? And we need to be open to hearing God in unexpected places and through unexpected people. That excites me. When God speaks to me, in an unexpected place. And I'm like, how do you know that? Because that's how he does it. Sometimes we expect him, he's going to speak while we're here. And then to your surprise, he speaks to you while you're standing in a queue somewhere. And then he says, ah, momentarily, this and this. And you're like, I've been wanting a solution to this for a long time. And then all of a sudden it comes. You standing in the queue and frustrated in the long queue. And he takes the time to minister to you. And then you go home and you're like, ah. But then you don't understand that he was speaking to you. You realize later that, ah, actually, 
walking sound while standing in the queue. But I dismissed it. But now I know. I don't know if those things happen to you, but they do happen to me. If we are believers, it should happen. You realize the inside. And the third thing, how do we then respond to this call, the call of God? Because the call of God comes with love. The call of God comes with compassion. The call of God comes with grace. See, the core issue Jesus highlights is that his generation refused to respond. Remember, they refused to respond. That's why they nailed him on the cross. They refused to respond. And they went against him. They nailed him on the cross. But I love the Lord. When he's hung on that cross, on that tree, what does he do? He brings redemption while I'm hanging on the cross. He says, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And that's how God works. And that's how Jesus works. Even though they refuse to respond, he still is pleading on our behalf. Same today. When we refuse to respond to his call, when we refuse to volunteer in the church, when we refuse to go pray for that one person, when we refuse to do certain things, that God still opens his arms and says, you know what? I'm going to give you another second chance. Maybe this time, if I make my voice more audible, you will hear me. And you don't hear the second time. Third time, you know, because God doesn't want our chances of bringing us to Him. He never does. But we get tired of being given the chances. <laughs> we get tired of being given the chances, and then we become frustrated when we get tired. Don't do it. He's going to tell 
talking to somebody else to do it. And he's going to do exactly what God told you to do. And you're going to be shocked about that. This is exactly what God told me to do when I was scared. So Abraham hit the call and he responded. And what did God do? God blessed him through that covenant. And he said he will be the father of nations. But if he didn't heed the call, would he have been the father of nations today? No. Same with us. When God calls us to respond, there's something behind it. Take it seriously. Don't rush it off. Because it comes with some blessing. Yes, it's not always easy, but it comes with some blessing. So this week, I pray that as we commit to taking time and concentrating on our reflections and asking ourselves these questions, I pray that God will reveal Himself to us. He will reveal Himself. What is this still calling us? Listen, I've ministered to the elderly. And I always say to them, you may think that your life is about to end. But trust me, this is a time when you can probably do more than you did when you had the energy. Because now you are in a space where you can simply just turn off the noise and just listen to God and pray. And just pray. And pray for everything. Pray for me, pray for everyone. Because you are in that place. Where you make your place of residence a war room of some kind. And you say, you know what? I'm going to stand in the gap. For a lot of things are happening. And I will commit my time. And set an appointment with the Lord each and every day just for somebody else. And that's your role. That's your duty. And don't take it lightly because it helps us to navigate and get direction. Because without people sitting in silence and praying, you're not going to get direction. Until there are people committed to doing that. So, my last question will be, what is God calling you to do today? Where is He prompting you to step out in faith? And what action do you need to take to move from hearing God to doing it? You see, <laughs> the journey of faith has processes. It has levels. You see, when Paul says that God needs to move you from glory, from one glory to another, he knows what he's talking about. And that is something that we are supposed to be experiencing as children of God. When we move from just hearing the word to doing what? Doing it. And if you've been in the church for 40 years and 50 years, but you are still <laughs> comfortable in just hearing and not doing, there's something wrong there. Because there has to be a movement. Christianity is a movement. You move. You don't stay in one place. You move. So that there's growth. And the wisdom of God. I love Jesus because he ends with the divine. You know, talking about the wisdom of God. And I'm going to end with this one. The wisdom of God. He says the wisdom of God is proven by action. I love the scriptures because they, they teach us how to walk this walk. Jesus closes this passage by saying, But wisdom is proved right by all and children. The truth of God's word is revealed by those who follow through and respond to his call. So if we have wisdom in Christ, it will be proven by our action when we are heeding the call.
Because it's easy to criticize. It's easy to judge. It's easy to dismiss. But the real fruit of wisdom is shown in those who hear God's voice and allow their lives to be shaped by it. So we need to move into a direction where God's voice, God's word, shapes us. So Luke 7, 31, 35 challenges us to examine our hearts so that we don't become like the generation of Jesus. Because history has a tendency of doing what? Repeating itself. It always repeats itself. After 100 years, I just say, it just hits us with the same thing. Is it because we don't learn the same things? Or is it just the pattern of the world? No, because we don't learn as human beings. We have to learn that it moves. The gospel is here to move us to one step, to another one, to another one, so that we can literally see the glory of God. So Jesus is trying to us. Are we willing to break through the noise and hear the call of God? Responding to God's whisper, responding to the Holy Spirit. So I do urge you to take the time to turn down the noise once in a while. Turn it down so you can spend time with the Lord. Amen.
pray for us that we stand strong when we are with them during uh, these holidays. And also we pray for those that your bread and the few needed, who are being some sick, some facing uh, bereavement in the family. May I ask you to do those two prayers for what you are. Right now. 
thus the light all over the world. Save us from time of temptation all over the world. We turn to you for blessings, security, and breakthrough. We hereby give you our highest praise and stay in peace, knowing it's all in your hands. In Jesus' name, receive our prayers. Amen.
Thank you. 
want you to notice on my side two things that I want to focus on. Is on the 27th of uh, this month, September, which is this is next week, on Friday. If you had noticed on the, I think the emails that go out to the communication on my hand again, I've added something that says echoes. You've seen that. It says what's on in the church. And it's like a bulletin. So that it gives you a focus of what's happening in the church. So you're praying for Puna. You know, we said we're going to have a heritage service, a creation service. And right at the end, there was um, a, a passage where it says, uh, answer prayers, that one. Um, so the 27th, we're going to have a praise and worship night. And this praise and worship night, we are going to be launching a new series that we are going to uh, do. Remember we used to do Alpha on Sundays, 5 o'clock? We're going back to that. But this one is not Alpha. It's going to be the prayer course. I don't know if you've ever heard about the prayer course, where we do unanswered prayers and answer prayers and we go through the Lord's Prayer. It's an eight-week course, so it will take place at the first session will be on the 29th. So we're launching it on Friday, and on the 29th, 4 o'clock, because we were talking with the wardens, what time should we start it? And then we said 4 o'clock, we will start, not 5, because it was 5, the normal time was 5, and it felt like, let's just push it to, you know, uh, to be a 4 o'clock. So it will be 4 o'clock, we come into this uh, setting, we watch a video, and then we discuss it then. Things and all of that. I want us to get used to uh, that because more of those are going to come where we have ministry outside just the service, but ministry during the week. Now I know that four o'clock you might be thinking, oh, I came to church in the morning, now I have to come. Remember, that one is a teaching. It's a teaching because when we preach, nobody can raise their hands and say, I'm not I, 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 I. This, uh, but that time is a time where it's a teaching, we all come together and learn how to pray, you know. And when we have unanswered prayers, what do we do with those? And what do we do with what God has done? Like when He has answered our prayers and when He has not answered our prayers. So that is the first one. So on the 27th of September, 7 o'clock, I said we're going to have a crazy machine night. It's going to be wonderful. You know? And as I say, it's not about the numbers, it's about the people that are committed to want to commit that time to God. If you feel like you, are, you want praise and worship, and you just want to be fed in that kind of way, you can come seven o'clock. And you, you will experience this. That's why I'm not missing you. So that's, you know, Supposed to, we're supposed to be having a band that we don't have, okay? But we do have a sin now so that we can just praise God. The, so the second one is the journey of giving. Now the journey of giving is, I would like us to just reminisce on the time when God was so good to you. You write that story and you send it to us. Because we're going to compile those stories from now until the 11th of November. Remember, we have the rumors in it. But I just want you to just tell us your story. What has God done in your life that you feel like when this happened, the hand of God was in this one? This one. And, and send us that story. It's either you can WhatsApp it on the WhatsApp number of the church, or you can email to the office and you can email to me. We'll compile those stories together. And from now until the 17th, probably we'll play some of the clips of the stories, you know, just two minutes of just hearing somebody sharing a story about how God came through for them. So when you send in the stories, the deadline is the 20th of October, because we want to compile the book like it will be in the PDF form and we'll distribute it in the PDF form. We don't want to you know, uh, green and green pens will you know, kill us if we print a lot of copies. So it will be in a PDF form so that you can be able to have it 
but this is going to be our story. Does that make sense? So that as a community, I, I, the reason why we want to do this is because some people don't know what God can do when they're consistent and faithful to the Lord. So it will motivate and encourage others that, you know what, if God can come through, you know, to Karen, God can come through to me as well and for me. So we're hoping that it will just motivate us to know that God is alive and He's well. Amen? Amen. So don't forget the deadline for that. You can write your story, send it to the office. Not to just one story. The one you feel just deserves for people to know that. I was going through this. You don't need something, you don't need to write your name. You can say anonymous. Does that make sense? Yeah. You can say anonymous if you don't want to be known. You say anonymous. So that we know that we can share your story. It can help someone else. Because our stories are there to be told so that others can be healed through our stories. And that's what we want to do. So we form that community of knowing our stories. And then um, the normal ones are we have heritage, uh, day on Sunday. So come as dressed in your traditional attire, and our theme is our heritage of Christ. So you know the theme already. You should know it on Sunday, but I'm telling you, because I'm preaching on Sunday. Okay? <laughs> our heritage of Christ. That's our theme on Sunday. Um, and then, um, I think that's about it. The other ones are normal ones. Confirmation and, yeah. I think that's it. Amen? Thank you.
Thank you.